Welcome to the Nancy Smith Cabin at Three Rivers Avian Center. It's a blustery, nasty day out there today, so we thought we'd do some owl pellet dissection today. Why don't you come on and join us? Hello, everybody. I'm Wendy Peroni. I'm Executive Director of Three Rivers Avian Center. And I'm Ron Peroni. I'm the Educational Director at Three Rivers Avian Center. We had sort of a wild and woolly day today with a lot of wind and a lot of uh, rain and stuff in between, so we decided we're going to work indoors a little bit today and do some owl pellet dissection. Yeah, why not? Let's talk a little bit about why we dissect owl pellets instead of <laughs> hawk pellets. Because here at the Avian Center, we see all kinds of pellets. So, um, I'm going to bring out this. This is a hawk pellet here. See, it came from a bag said hawk pellet. And Ron, there's a, an owl pellet for you. And that's from Hooli, by the way, the owl that, oh, we, right. that we showed yesterday from the last film. So this is a hawk pellet. And there's my owl pellet. Yeah. Well, right away you can see that uh, the owl pellet has bones showing in it on the outside. Mm -hmm. And this uh, hawk pellet looks like felt. That's actually just a piece of, of uh, fur right there. That's not any bone. It just looks like felt. Hmm. So the reason that uh, we don't study hawk pellets and, and dissect hawk pellets is because they have a little bit different anatomy from an owl. An owl, when it eats, you know, it, it'll, it'll rip its food apart and swallow it. Okay, sometimes they swallow it whole if it's small enough. And it goes straight down to the stomach where it gets digested and then all the little bits and stuff that they can't digest like the bones and the teeth and whatever else all get wadded together into this pellet which is then surrounded in the fur from the animal that they ate and then they cough that up several hours after eating. Um, in the case of hawks they have kind of a similar thing but right where uh, down in the throat area they actually have a pouch. It's got a sphincter muscle at the top and the bottom in, the, in their throat and they, chew, they get their food down into that, that pouch, it's called a crop and there are mild digestive juices in there and then they can fly away safely and, and sit up on a tree somewhere and, and digest the rest of it so gradually it slowly comes down out of the, the crop and into the stomach right. where it gets even, an even stronger um, digestive juices. So it ends up that there's a lot more digestion goes on in a, in a diurnal hawk or a diurnal raptor, I mean daytime raptor, it's like hawks, falcons, that sort of thing than there is in, in nighttime raptors like the owls. So this one is not going to have very many bones or pieces to even tell what's going on, but that one will. So let's start with the owl pellet, Ron. Sure. Let me have some tweezers. You can have either hemostats <laughs> or tweezers, either way you want to go. Okay, we'll be watching this on the other camera here while we talk about it. I'm going to just break this apart and see if I get lucky with some big pieces right off the bat. And right here we have a chart that actually shows, uh, you can sort of lay out the bones as you go and tell whether you have a rodent, a shrew, a mole, or birds. Here at the Avian Center, we feed all different kinds of foods. So we'll, some of our birds get quail, some get mice, some get rats. So, and then, and then of course there's Regis the eagle who gets fish on a regular basis. So. The pellets can get kind of wild and woolly when you start looking at what's inside of them. Yeah. Okay, right off the bat, I found a rib. Ooh. Let's see if we can clean that up a little bit better there, Okay, Ron. you clean that up. I'll clean that up. There you go. Where's the ribs? There it is. And that's not a rib. I wasn't. Okay. What Wait do you think minute. it is? I don't know. <laughs> it looks like... I, that looks like a pier. Yeah, because it's got the that's little process. That's a front leg. Yeah, yep. it's got a process on each end. Yeah, and I think that's what that other part was too, is the other yeah. part of the, of the front front limb. Yep. So it looks like we have a rodent. Okay. And a big chunk here that looks like a top of his skull. So whoever, when Huli chopped down on this guy, fortunately, he'd come out of the freezer. He wasn't <laughs> running around in the cage screaming. There we are. Now, let's see. What else can we come up with? It's interesting, you know, some people might wonder why anyone would bother um, dissecting an owl pellet 
Well, the fact is, uh, especially if you're into um, paleontology. Oh, wait a second. Look what I got. I see a wad of fur is what I see. Look at that. I... Teeth. Okay, well, let's clean those teeth off a little bit. We need a hemostat. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. A little jawbone. With teeth in it. Here, give me a hemostat. <laughs> anyway, if you were like a paleontologist, there are places in the world where owls have been uh, living in old caves for a very long time. What do you make of that? See if you can... I don't know, but there's still fuzz on it. And, uh, like, there's a cave in um, Utah that ever since the last Ice Age, and that's 13,000 years ago, cave um, owls have been living there. And so there's 13,000 years of owl pellets scattered on the floor in heaps. And scientists, by pulling those apart and studying the animals in them, they have discovered... Uh, a number of things about the ecology of that time. First of all, what animals were present, how big they were, and how healthy were they were, and um, what changes they underwent over time. I can't. More teeth. More teeth, yep. Yeah. And what they discovered was over 13,000 years, the the rodent population, while it's still robust, of course, the animals are smaller, and um, the overall amount of energy passing through the uh, the system there is has decreased over time. Did you, did you, what do I got? Oh, big bone. Ooh, got a nice size bone. That on looks this like one. a femur. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's short. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's a process. Yeah. Oh wait! 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 Can't tell. Yeah, because it's cause you can see right there. It's, it's the yeah. There. It is. Oops, I've got it upside down. But yes, that's it. That would be that. Yep. Part of a hind <coughs> leg. <clears throat> Fun stuff. Some people think it's yucky. I don't. Well, these I should mention that these um, pellets here have been sterilized. So Ron and I are not worried about you know getting anything from them, of course, and. Um, we wash our hands before and after doing this exercise anyway. So uh, if you find a pellet out in the wild, if you, if you get lucky, um, it's okay to take it apart. Just make sure that you are, you know, keep yourself clean. Wash your hands before and afterwards. And if you've got gloves, wear them. You know, dish gloves work great. Oh, there's a piece of an insect. Oh, what did we get? Uh, I can't really tell, but it's, um, it's definitely a piece of car carapace. Well... So, um, see, that's got fur attached to it now. Yeah, he chowed down on a beetle or something, yep. too. She, excuse me. <laughs> Huli is a she. Huli is a she. Okay. Oh, that's that's a half a half a bone. Uh, they crunched that one pretty well. Yeah, they might want to put that into the miscellaneous bin. Yeah, here's a bigger bone. Oh, yeah, it's curved. That's a rib. It's had a, yeah, it's definitely been broken apart. I, I would guess it's probably a rib, but I'm not sure. Owls have been around a long time. They, uh, we know that there were owls, and like I said earlier, in this, in this uh, part of the world, at, you know, 15,000 years ago, but they found much older fossils of owls. Uh, some of them, uh, actually like the, uh, the barn owls, They've been around for about 23,000, 20, 23 million years. Wow. And um, owls of other kinds uh, that aren't still around today have been around for over 50 million years. So owls have been around a long time doing their thing. I've got another jawbone. Another piece of a jawbone? Yeah. All right. That. I've got to get all this crud off it. Get all the fur off. There. I think. Yeah, there we go. Yep, it's got teeth in it. Dead giveaway. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here's another big bone. Another big bone. It's got the same thing as that one. So it's. Oh. Uh, wait. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Get the 
for roughness, maybe. What we're using here is a chart that, um, if you're interested, we can put up on our website as a PDF and you can download it. It's a copy of a copy of a copy that we got a long time ago, so it's it, it's a little um, strange in some places. It's but, fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> but it still works for our purposes. There are many others that you're that are available on the web too for download. You just need to Google it. This is a pretty heavy bone. A piece. I think this is a piece of a jaw. Okay. Or a skull. And, ooh, ooh, this ooh, is different. There's some fuzz in. Well, no, there was something in that fuzz. Let's see if you can get it. It's a vertebra. I got oh. the first vertebra. There we go. Whatever this is, it broke as I it came apart as I Yeah, you have to be careful then. That was clumsy. Excuse me? Yeah, here. Let's um you work on that half, I'll work on this half. When I was a kid I found a skeleton of a raccoon laid out on the ground. And I took the bones home, numbered them, and reassembled the skeleton. I thought it was cool. I mounted it. Very cool. Yeah. I yeah. Was Twelve years old. It's a good project. I think this is a vertebra. I'm gonna put that in the vertebra column. Yeah, that one too. Another big flat piece. Mm-hmm. Probably part of the skull. Yeah. There. Yep. There it is. No. I'd be willing to bet... Scapula? Maybe a scap... Nope. Nope. Skull. Skull. <laughs> and here's one more piece of something. Anyway, this is fun stuff. Now, if this bird had eaten something other than a rat, we have, you know, these other columns that we could uh, work on. One time, uh, one of our birds caught a mole and... We were able to find the bones for it. And, of course, we do feed some of our birds quail. So sometimes when we do this, we get bird stuff. All birds cast pellets. Well, pretty much all of them. Um, even the songbirds. Sometimes they'll, they'll cough up a pellet, and it'll just be like the casings of seeds that they've eaten. It's not all the time, but they're kind of hard to find too. Um, of course, you've got you know the raptors, but crows and ravens also cough up pellets. Uh, you'll also see aquatic wading birds like herons, for example, and their their pellets are really interesting because they eat a lot of different things that are in the marshlands and in the waterways. So they're eating things like uh, small invertebrates that are in the in the marsh, or they might be eating a frog or a lizard or a newt or something like that or they might be eating small minnows that might be there so when they cough up their pellets they're kind of loose um, you saw how loose this great horned owl pellet was but for the um, for the herons and such they they just barely hold together and then it's, it, of course then they cough them up a lot of times it's over there at um, in the waterways so the the water will just wash away the pellet. Excuse my phone. Ah. Look at that. Really nice piece of vertebra here. No, I think that's part of a hip bone. <laughs> but it's got a hole up the middle. Look at that. I think you've got part of the pelvis. And it fits on the diagram. Hmm. I disagree, but okay. Ah, oh, disagreement's fun. <laughs> We'll argue about this for the rest of the day. This is another piece. Killed that phone. I know, I'm sorry. It's um, Jesse's just checking in. Our, our uh, outreach coordinator is just sending me some messages. Uh, so we'll be catching up with her again shortly here. Yeah. She's working from home in this wonderful time of COVID-19. Yeah. 
Okay, so should I go ahead and take a look at this then? I think? Might as well. We're just getting down to little, little Yeah, let's let, let's take a look at this. Uninteresting stuff here. Um, I'd like to show the folks uh, the difference. Now, we, we saw how easy to take apart this was, right? Well, this is a hawk pellet. And again, this is why you don't study hawk pellets very much. Lift it up a little higher so they can see it. Because it actually, it looks like felt. It looks like a wad of felt. And as you break it apart, you can see how it just sort of is sort of compacted in in layers onto itself. You can see how it just sort of comes apart in layers versus how when Ron was working with this, it sort of just sort of fell apart. But this is typical of, of hawks and, and diurnal raptors where they just keep wadding it in and wadding it in. You can see how it just comes apart in pieces like that, and it's all dense. But you also notice that there are no bones in this at all. Okay. Now, we have had occasional times when they've been eating insects. We might find a, a wing of a katydid or something like that in here. Sometimes the carapace of a, of a insect that they ate. But most of the time, this is what you get out of a hawk pellet. You can see there's no bones, there's nothing but just very wadded fur. And again, this is because they have that crop structure in their throat, so it's a pre-digestion area. So their food is super digested. And you won't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> well, wait, 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 A piece of grass. <laughs> and um, it was exciting there for a minute. Ron gets the fun pellets, I get the, that's a piece, another piece of grass. The reason you'll see grass sometimes show up is because the, the birds when they're eating will stand on their food on the ground, okay? So sometimes you'll see them come back with a, a stone or a small stone or a piece of gravel. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little bit of grass in there, uh, whatever they were standing on with the food on it and they just grabbed it and ate it and whatever was on the <laughs> Whatever stuck to their food went down. Went with down it. with it, right? <laughs> and there you go, folks. Not much in the hawk pellet. Uh, two pieces of grass. Uh -uh. That's it. So we hope you've enjoyed this session today. Um, we enjoy, we've enjoyed bringing it to you. We'll have another one for you uh, on Monday morning, and uh, it's going to be a nice weekend. A lot. You you uh, really should take advantage of it. Remember to keep washing your hands. Keep your faces covered, you know, the mouth and the nose and everything covered if you're out with other people. And remember to keep a six-foot distance, but get outside and enjoy a beautiful springtime here in Appalachia. Thanks for joining us.